Welcome back to Teacher Jeff 40K. I'm happy today because I found it. I found my Orx Codex from, I didn't even check actually beforehand. This was the first Codex I have ever owned. So the first army I bought, uh, I bought the Orcs. This was the Codex I needed for them. And it was green, I love that. Just the surrounding thing was just green, very orky. All the other codexes were black or some other color or something. This one looked like it was designed by an orc. There's some skulls on it and some patches and war paint and stuff. This guy is from 1999. So this was my first codex. And there's some really neat stuff inside here. Some of you guys who might have played Orcs, you know, a million years ago like me might remember this. And there's some really cool photos in here. Converted models, um, different neat little stories, and um, ways to use the Orcs in battle. So this was the first one I ever had. And I looked through this a million times. I must have. Because... Um, well, for one, the cover has been neatly disconnected from the rest of the book. <laughs> so uh, she's seen some use. Let's put it that way. But this book, man, this is... Uh, I looked through this earlier and it took me down memory lane quite a bit. So there are quite a few things I wanted to look through here. Again, I don't really want to look through the rules or anything like that. They're not really relevant. Uh, they've changed a lot. But I did want to look at some of the really cool stuff inside. So right off the bat, right on the interior cover, you get this right away. And the first thing you see over here is a conversion. And that made me so happy. I saw that. And it even says converted. It uses the words inside the codex. And that right away, when I was looking at this for the first time, I thought, I want to do that. I want to make some cool stuff. I want to design my own designs. And you know what? I found some of my old models too. I ended up making one. So I took a big flamer, strapped it to him, and took one of those barrels. So a long time ago, some of you might remember this piece right here. This was part of a uh, games workshop, you know, mini terrain set. They had like a couple of tank traps, um, some barrels, and a couple of other things too. Very, very basic stuff to set up on the battlefield. And I used one of those barrels and I strapped it to this dude's back. And I used, this is a piece of cloth cord that I used as like the, uh, the connection to. And I gave him a monster flamer. So I was really happy about that guy. I had to uh, glue uh, something to the bottom of this piece of metal so that I could actually <laughs> keep him uh, standing because this is a plastic orc boy but this that uh, flamer is all metal so it would weigh him down but uh, yeah this thing man this codex got my uh, my mind working what what can I do how can I convert right here a page called the showcase all sorts of cool stuff someone took an old rhino and converted it into a truck and this one was one of my favorites. So this is a great big, was it a war track? A battle wagon. So yes, one of the coolest things about the Codex is that there was a unit in here that Games Workshop did not have a model for. The battle wagon, it just didn't exist. You were supposed to take parts or find another tank and build it yourself. That was the idea. And it would look super orky, right? You'd use a bunch of your orc pieces, put them maybe on an imperial vehicle, or maybe you'd find some other stuff somewhere else, and you'd make your own battle wagon. I thought that was really, really cool. Um, yeah, neat stuff. And then, oh my god, yeah. So here, let's have a look here. Someone built this big guy, too. There you go. So that thing, man, you can see this is huge. All sorts of guns and barrels and stuff. And yeah, very, very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. And so this is a very um, 
Oh, this is from 1997. So they had a big, big battle uh, in 1997 called Big Tooth River. But the thing that's coolest about this is that they had like so many buggies. Look at all those. Look at all those. They collected all those buggies together to race across into Imperial lines. Man, it looks like a real battlefield. You know, this, like, I don't, I don't normally like to throw around uh, the word epic very often. I find it's very liberally used these days. But this, this is truly epic. Look at that. All those buggies. That's got to be so fun. I mean, not fun to move around on the table, but, like, you know, fun to actually play something of that magnitude, of that scale. I mean, just in the frame, man, I'm got to be 50 or 60 buggies there. Very cool stuff. And someone made a big squiggith too. Look at this guy right here. Big squiggith with the cannon on top. Super cool. Some looted Imperial vehicles. This one's awesome. That, those are actually claws in the front of it. So someone took an old rhino chassis and slapped big claws on there. And it became like a claw tank. Awesome. Really cool stuff. Yeah, here you go. A section called Mech's Workshop. This was just ideas. How to convert stuff. They showed this guy just before he painted anything. Slapping just plates of metal together to make an orc vehicle. Super cool, man. Super cool. And also how to make different orc terrain. Like the other codexes I showed you, they show you how to make certain pieces of terrain without having to go out and buy it. You can make it on your own. Very cool. And some custom conversions. So you've got one orc in a jumping position and one orc with a custom big shooter. And this one I emulated myself as well. I built this guy up right here. I didn't make it as dynamic with the foot that's sort of like bracing itself and he's holding it backwards. Because um, again, I was about 12 years old, so. But I did, you know, chop a barrel off and slap one on here, and I took as many of the bullet belts as I could find and just put them on one guy. This guy gets all the bullets. So super fun to do that stuff. Got my mind working, and then I put a uh, one of the reticles up there. As if orcs are going to aim. Yeah, right. But it does look really cool, doesn't it? So yeah, all sorts of cool stuff. Cool stuff in the showcase. Um, they showed you how to build hard boys, which were a, uh, a thing back then. Which was basically uh, orc boys, but with some armor on them. So I think instead of a 6 plus save, they would get a 4 plus save. So it made them a little tougher, which was very, very cool. Um, what else we got in here? So yeah, again, tips and tricks on how to paint certain things. So these are not really custom models, but just how to paint stuff. Very cool. Killic hands, orc dreadnoughts. Uh, they were called orc dreadnoughts, by the way. Def dread is pretty new. Um, how to paint with different color schemes. That sort of thing. Uh, the different clans of orcs and the colors that you could uh, you could use with them. Like you had goths and snake bites, bad moons. I think there was one called Evil Suns. Yeah, Evil Suns, all red. And, uh, oh, this is cool. So like different camouflage and, and uh, types of um, leather, which was kind of neat. Some of them look almost like tiger stripe or things like that. Really neat stuff. Neat ideas to customize your orcs, not just, you know, Here's the main color. We recommend you use these colors. No, look at what other people have done. Get some ideas from there. See, some guy made a post with a bunch of Space Marine heads on it. Cool stuff, man. Cool stuff. And also using fantasy bits as well. So if anyone remembers the super old orc kit, this knife was not included, nor was this head with all the ponytails. So just sort of telling you, you know, you can use other models, put some stuff together with other things uh, to make your orc mob really uh, individualized. Um, here we go, I've got another one with a 
again, converted rocket launcher. You can see he drew a face on the missile. That is awesome. One there, up there, it says Big Bomb. Ah, it says Big Bomb 2. Maybe he's already fired number one. Yeah, very cool stuff. And then Orc Tactics, right here. I'm a little disappointed they didn't spell tactics with a bunch of K's. I don't know why, but it seems appropriate. Um, no, seriously, though, look at, look at all this stuff. This is great. Swamp them. Telling you, basically, use a crap load of boys and throw them at your opponent. Really neat. And again, like the Space Marine armies I showed you, there was a bit of an army showcase where they'd show you two armies. So you've got this guy, uh, what is Adrian Wood, and then down here you've got Andy Chambers with this army right here. And you can see a bunch of the stuff, a bunch of the converted stuff. They must have had a lot of fun making some of that stuff. Because those are not official dreadnoughts right there. And one of those war tracks is not the real deal. And up here, too. So remember that battle wagon? He had to make that thing from scratch. Very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. So telling you, you know, what's in the army, what you should build. And then the starter section right here, of course, which is HQ and two troops, which is how you used to build an army. There was only one way to build an army uh, back in the day for standard missions. You needed one HQ and two troops. And then you could take up to six troops, three elites, three fast attack, three heavy support, and another HQ. Uh, but yeah, that's all a little different. Anyhow, this is the funny part. So looted vehicle. This is the only bit of rules I really want to get into because it was such a neat um, thing. So looted vehicle it was a heavy support option. You could only take one. So you may include uh, one looted vehicle worth 51 plus points or one of the three vehicles worth 50 points or less. Or one to three vehicles, excuse me, worth 50 points or less. Even though you can include more than one vehicle, they count as a single heavy support choice. So, type. A looted vehicle may be chosen from one of the following army list entries in the 40k rulebook. Oh yeah, so back in the day, uh, the rulebook had all the codex information in it as well. So you could actually build an army without the codex. If you had the rulebook, which I do still have from 3rd edition, that one I gotta find as well. It's probably at my parents' place. I'll try and find that too. Because you had the army entries in there. They were not as detailed as the codexes, but they were there. So you can choose from the Space Marines a Rhino, a Razorback, a Predator Annihilator, a Predator Destructor, or a Land Raider. And from the Imperial Guard, you could take a Chimera, a Hellhound, a Griffin. I don't think I know what that is. Lehman Russ Battle Tank, Lehman Russ Demolisher, or Basilisk. Griffin. Maybe it was some sort of artillery tank. It sounds like it would be an artillery tank. Um, where's the griffin gone? Maybe someone can answer that question. Where did the griffin go? You know, they've got all the other mis mythical beasts. Chimera, Hellhound, Basilisk. But griffin. I guess they have the wyvern now and the hydra. Um, anyhow, this was really cool. So you could choose one of those vehicles. So, although the cost for a looted vehicle remains the same as it was in its parent army list, its ballistic skill is reduced to two. So, ballistic skill two basically means you hit on fives. So, orc ballistic skill. Uh, because it's crewed by orcs! Exclamation mark. Also note that the model for a looted vehicle must be converted and or painted appropriately to show it being used by orcs. Simply borrowing a Lehman Russ from an Imperial Guard army is not allowed. Wow, they, they actually forced you to do conversions on this. Cool. Weapons, variable, see below. Options, the looted vehicle may be given any weapon options permitted from its army list. For example, a Lehman Russ battle tank may be given a heavy flamer or heavy bolt responses at the cost of 10 points each. A looted vehicle may use orc vehicle upgrades. 
So it would take the weapons from the army you stole it from, basically, and you could just slap orc stuff on it, which is so cool. You could loot a vehicle, take it, it's yours now. You know, it doesn't work quite as well, but uh, who cares? It's yours. So, looted vehicles. Make a breakdown test for each looted vehicle at the start of each turn. Roll a d6. On a 1, roll again on the table below. d6 result. 1. May not move this turn. Roll again on the table next turn. 2 or 3. May not move this turn. 4 to 6. Don't press that. Whoa! The vehicle lurches forward 2d6 straight ahead. Make dangerous terrain, shock tests, tank shock tests, etc. as if the vehicle were moving normally. The vehicle counts as moving the distance rolled on the dice and may not attack any further, uh, may not make any further moves this turn. So it was, it was kind of a wonky thing, you know, you, you, ne you were never sure if it was going to work. But hey, you got some Imperial guns on you, plasma cannons, battle cannons, las cannons, all sorts of fun stuff. Very, very neat. So I thought that was really cool. I always wanted to do that. I always wanted to take an Imperial vehicle and, you know, orc it up, make it, uh, make it a little different. And then, uh, really, really cool, they showed, um, they showed some of the orc background and, like, physiology and stuff, and where they thought orcs came from, how they grew. Look at this. Orcoid cocoon. So they show the surface fungi and the orc embryo and how they are being born. Kind of cool. And then they showed the physiology. Here's an orc head with the brain and the thickened bone. And in this codex, I don't know if it was the first time that happened, but in this codex, the um, this was also written uh, from the point of view of some imperial guy. Um, yeah, sirs, what follows is a report filed by Janitor Major Lucas Anzion, based upon observations conducted in the Apollor system. So it's basically a scientific report on where orcs come from and how they work. And this, in, in here, um, we get the idea that if orcs think something will work, then it will work. So they realize that a lot of the weapons that the orcs use are actually not functional until they are used by orcs, and then they become fun functional just because of that mental energy. Very cool, very neat stuff. So the orcs just want to fight, you know? Very, very cool. And they have a bunch of special characters too. Some of them you right, might recognize. Gaskull, obviously, he's there. Uh, Nazdreg, was that a guy? Warlord Nazdreg, does he still exist? I'm not sure. But Zagstruck uh, is the uh, the um, flyboy or whatever they're called. Um, he joins, uh, what are they called? The ones with the rockets on their back. Um, and then Mad Doc Grotznik, Snickrot, who is the uh, commando. Commando with a K. Um, very cool, very cool. And then they had a bike lord called Wazdaka Gutsmack. And he was, uh, he was a biker. Let's see. Got him riding in with some shooters, blasting his way in. Getting ready to bring in the claw. Really awesome. So very, very cool stuff. Um... And a lot of the reports, you had sort of reports written by Imperials, like I showed you, and then some of them were uh, written uh, <laughs> as if it was written by orcs, which was really, really nice. It's kind of funny. Uh, and here they show you sort of a hierarchy of how orcs can get bigger and bigger. So you get a Scar Boy, which is a veteran. Just a boy, he's a warrior, Grot, slave. You got the leader knob, and then you've got the war boss. It's just a bigger orc. Yeah, neat stuff. Anyhow, I, I wanted to share that with you guys. This is sort of where I started. This is what got my mind moving on customization and how to make things truly your own. Um, 
so I started by directly stealing some ideas from this codex, but then went on to, to show you can make whatever you want. It's all plastic, so you can cut anything which I found really, really cool. It's something they don't really endorse as much anymore uh, at Games Workshop, which is a little disappointing. But I brought out a couple of my other old conversions. I actually only have four work models left. I sold most of my army years ago. So I had this guy who you saw before with the flamer. I've got my customized big shooter, the idea I got from the book. And then I had a couple of my own ideas so I started with this guy by cutting some of the axe heads and giving him a double-headed he axe. And then I thought, why not give him two double-headed axes? So this guy just had two axes. I don't think there were any rules for that, but who cares? Two axes. Let's rock. And then, because I had watched Army of Darkness and the Evil Dead, I made a guy with a chainsaw hand. So I cut off his hand, cut off the chainsaw, turned this wristband into a bandage, left a little blood up there, and just slammed the chainsaw sword, I guess, on top. And now it's part of him. And he was, you know, the guy with the scar across his face. Let's see if I can get that to focus. There you go. Oh, uh, yeah. Wait. Oh, don't focus on me. Focus on this. I hate this camera. You saw it there for a second, though, right? Anyhow, so this guy, I made him sort of like a veteran-type character where, you know, he'd been slashed across the face, he lost a hand, but he just turned his hand into a chainsaw, so pretty awesome. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you have anything else, if you have anything you want to mention, did you have this codex when you were younger? Do you still have this codex? Uh, what other codexes did you have? Yeah, just to... Let's just finish on that. Look at that picture. It's great. The guy with like a head strapped to his belt, some skulls, blasting stuff. Yeah, man. Orcs. Super fun. Anyhow, thanks for watching, guys.